The buzz on the spin Arashak is both everything Hoagie expected and completely underwhelming. Desert Nagasha, her face and body painted in the traditional way to show she's taking things completely seriously. Lightly armored and clearly heavily armed, but wearing her weapons openly and with her hands away from them. Along her deep brown tail are numerous belts that will expand into hard armor and a vacuum suit if things start getting aggressive. The woman is clearly both paranoid and while she's willing to talk, she's not willing to be on the back foot or whatever the equivalent is for a Nagasha. Her daughters to either side, on the other hand, have light makeup on and clearly hate being on Octoran spin. Neither of them has said anything as Hoagie turns over the idiot prisoner in the locket. He also has a case with the less important articles and a repayment of the petty cash she stole. The prisoner is unconscious to prevent any ill-advised actions on her part. That War Lady Arashok begins before her daughter on the right slithers up. You think this is enough? The younger Nagasha demands as a blazing white plasma sword ignites in her middle right hand. She holds it out to Hoagie and points in his face. Four bangers, two abladers, and a shotgun are pointed back by his guard. That having some kind of bimbo just give back what was taken. She doesn't get any further as Hoagie grabs the weapon by the blade and rips it out of her hand. There's a silence as he casually flips the blazing weapon around and then deactivates it then tosses it back to the girl. He says nothing to her, but he does motion for his girls to calm down. The situation may be tense, but shooting someone whose fire support includes a capital-class warship is not something to be done on a whim. Interesting Axiom brand, War Lady Arishok says, and Hoagie nods with a slight grin. How do you solve the problem of such a brand overloading and explosively releasing the energy? There's a last-second save where the vast majority of the energy erupts away from the brand. It would still be more than enough to take your arm clean off, Arashok notes dryly. I'm aware of that. It's still worth the risk, he says. Hmm. A small band of heavily armed and armored Sharbi, low-profile body armor, numerous weapons, and a crude but very effective Axiom brand. You are not just some piece of eye candy. I hope not, otherwise I really need to step things up. Hoagie remarks and Arishok merely raises a painted eyebrow. Brightly colored armor reading out Berserker in numerous bits of graffiti. Four separate languages involved with a black background. Tritite, titanium alloy. Kutha Undweave with small totems designed to make it all lighter. Well designed, but not exceptionally so. A work in progress, Hoagie remarks. I see, to be clear, is this a show of force or contrition? Neither. I am a fully authorized administrator on this station. I was personally involved in the apprehension of the thief and the recovery of the stolen goods. I'm just doing my job. What? Do you really think that? Arashok's louder daughter begins and Arashok's arm snaps out to clamp over her mouth. Merely thorough? I see, Arashok states before grinning. Excuse me, Arashok's other daughter asks, slithering forward. Hoagie merely raises an eyebrow. But I'm not certain as to why you're being so accommodating. You could have simply lied to send us elsewhere. You could have denied the thief being here at all. There were any number of other actions or reactions. Why this one? There may not be proper laws on this station, but the laws of consequences still apply here. Being stupid enough to draw an enormous amount of retribution leads to the consequence of being fed to it in order to avert it. There's also the fact that she got caught. Another blunder. Furthermore, what she stole was guaranteed to piss you off and yet couldn't be sold for very much. Stupid all around and stupid should hurt. It encourages people to smarten up. Oh, this fool won't be getting a chance to do that. No, but the fact we're not going to hide what's happening is going to encourage other women to think things through. Granted, stealthier thieves that go for juicier prizes will probably be a problem in the future. 
but they make better customers than bungling idiots who smash and run. More coin, Hoagie explains, and War Lady Arishok nods. That is enough. We need to leave now, she says. But he, he proved you a fool when you made a threat you could not enforce. You have full face paint. Act like it. Arashok snaps. She gives Hoagie a studying look before scanning his nearby wives. The human husband of a Charbi hive. You have effectively an entire army at your disposal. If you think 201 soldiers are enough to occupy an entire space station, then I question what kind of army you think they are. Questions indeed, Lady Arishok says before the thief squirms. But for later, perhaps. I have a fool to properly secure. Thank you for your services, human. Should you desire employment outside of a criminal station, I would be happy to accept an application. Someone as thorough and efficient as you are is a boon in any army, especially as you have the sheer tenacity to endure an Axiom brand being applied. You were serious, mother? That's how he did it? The more respectful daughter asks. Lady Arashok nods. But Axiom brands are torture. Forcing them on anyone is illegal. It is illegal to force them. Volunteering for one, however, that's an entirely different thing, Hoagie says. Now, if you don't mind heading back to your ship, I have a great deal to do before my day finishes. And what more could possibly be more important than us? The impertinent daughter demands. Rumors of infestation. Following up on the organ smuggling operation I dismantled earlier today, properly chastising the criminal gangs in Sector 1 that have tried to influence the import and exports of Sector 4, following up on the food poisoning scare, Hoagie says as he checks his communicator. His voice drops a level in disgust. Oh, and it appears that we have someone in a blood frenzy a few blocks away that needs to be contained. So if you'll excuse me, I have work to do. You have what you came for. Please leave at your earliest convenience and thank you for visiting Octor and Spin. With that, he turns on his heel and starts to move. Come on, girls. Let's give your toys a workout. Just remember the first rule of combat. Stay the fucking cover. The gun is always loaded. There is only opening fire and reloading. Do unto others. The girls chime out all around him and he smiles widely even as he pulls out the pieces of his rifle and assembles it while his strides lengthen to a pace most would have to jog to keep up with. you damn right, he says, even as he slots in the magazine and then shifts from a long stride into a sprint as he leaves the detention area and races onto the walkways of Sector 4. He can hear screams in the distance and they're from slightly below nearer to the docking rings. So he leaps off the platform and descends with his wives in hot pursuit. What are you going to do if the target is armored? Plasma. But the real question is why haven't they already been stopped? Everyone's armed on this station. Who the hell isn't ready for some idiot just... An explosion rocks out on the next walkway level down and it shatters before collapsing downwards. Come on! I've got the power now. I'm in charge. I am... Miss Baroness Crazy Pants screams out as she waves around a large weapon. Fuck, is that an endless barrage? Hoagie asks. Looks like. Which explains why no one's tried anything, Zabriza says, and he sighs. All right, looks like I need a lucky shot then, Hoagie says as he sets aside his rifle and pulls out his lucky Luger. And what does luck have to do with anything? Lady Arishok asks, and Hoagie slowly turns to regard her. The prisoner isn't with her and her daughters are with her, so it hopefully means that she had the idiot sent to her ship or teleported into the brig or something. He's not going to catch a thief twice just because some bimbo can't secure a prisoner who's been knocked out, gift-wrapped and remanded to their custody. Nothing but I've practiced Axiom techniques through this pistol so many times it's second nature, Hoagie says, before turning back just in time to behold further explosions. Bitch dies. One shot. He takes aim and pulls the trigger, 
the target moves and the bullet moves with her. The bullet, the gun, the powder and the casing have all been infused so much that in the microsecond it takes for the copper jacketed piece of lead to travel. Hoagie is in complete control the entire time. She only moved a few inches, but she would still have the bullet slamming into the top of her head if she had dived off the platform and sprinted a block. Not that it does anything. The bullet completely fails to penetrate, and in the half second it takes for the crazed gunwoman to look up. Hoagie has already launched himself downwards with a shout of cover me. The deadly weapon reorients, and even as ablader beams and banger blasts slam down around the field of fire, numerous missiles are launched out. Most of them are destroyed by the explosions blossoming in the air, but one gets close. Hoagie twists to the side and his left hand snaps out to catch the sliver-sized missile. By the time he finishes the movement and is facing the shooter again, an act that takes less than a second, it's already the size of a toothpick. As he judges the distance and the missile continues to expand, the shooter is forced to dive and he adjusts ever so before throwing the now chopstick-sized missile downwards. It hits the endless barrage a second later. It's the size of a baseball bat. The gunwoman screams in rage as the primed rocket in the barrel explodes along with the one that just impacted the gun. Her scream shifts to shock and pain as the weapon's ammo chamber is compromised as the endless barrage itself is reduced to scrap metal. Thankfully, the thousands upon thousands of miniaturized rockets now expanding to full size have not been primed. And while the deadly rain of heavy ordnance is indeed incredibly dangerous, none of them explode. Hoagie hits the platform and instantly slips as he tries and fails to find balance on the still expanding carpet of rockets erupting from the compromised weapon. He just lies down for a moment as the thousands of rockets roll over him. There are going to be so many damn bomb threats after this, he mutters to himself with a deeply unhappy look in his eyes. He then sits up in time for his wives to slam into the growing pile that's spilling over the sides of the walkway below. I'm all right. This is just more work. Damn it. That was an endless barrage. What were you thinking? That weapons like that are easy to dodge with Axiom. And if I can't just shoot the bitch, I'll get it out of her hands and end the threat that way. Hoagie asks. He then looks over to where the rockets are still erupting from and sighs. She wasn't expecting it, that's for sure. Still, why was she ready for a bullet? Or did she just have some kind of catch-all defensive ability active? You're in a river of rockets and you're focusing on how she resisted the bullet? If she hadn't, we wouldn't have the river of rockets. Hoagie replies as he stands up fully and then holsters his gun. So much for it being my lucky Luger. He then wades through the still expanding river of rockets and reaches down to brush some to the side so he can get at the buried body of the attacker. He grabs it by the shoulder and hefts up. Then she moans in pain and his eyebrows go up in shock. No shit, you are a tough bitch. I thought for sure you were dead. He notes as the river of expanding ammunition finally comes to an end. Not that it's going to matter. Without a damn good reason, you're not going to be living much longer, little lady. The thoroughly knocked out Tret just groans and he pulls out a roll of duct tape. Ten seconds later and with a very well tied up criminal over his shoulder, Hoagie is already walking towards the brig once more with his communicator on his ear. Yes, the situation is mostly contained, but I need the janitors down here to at least try to stomp down on the levels of rockets we've got rolling all over the place. They may not be prime, but the guts just need the wires crossed the right way for those suckers to go boom. Not to mention that when they're full-sized, one of them can easily crack someone's neck or skull if it conks them on the head. No, the weapon is not salvageable if its ammunition is all over the damn sector. He says, heading off the obvious question.